Hey, yo, it's your boy, number one Marmaduke fan, and I've got half an hour to wait at the bus station, and there's nothing around. No one as far as the eye can see. So I'm looking at Zenon issue three, which is an Americ uh, Americanized edition of a manga by Masaomi Kanzaki, and uh, Kanzaki has some real great strengths, even by the standards of manga. He, he, he's really kicking a lot of butt. So uh, what this is, is you know, Viz Comics and Eclipse International, they used to bring all this manga over to the United States in the 80s and 90s. So, of course, it's read left to right. They anglicize the sound effects. But this is really kind of charming. It's almost interesting to go back and see how they used to bring over manga before it became standard to preserve the right-to-left formatting and the Japanese kanji. And there's a really sick little essay at the back with just kind of a who's who of great robotic characters in Japanese comics. So I might type these up a little later and I'll have a nice little reading list for me. You know, there's, there's your famous ones, of course, like Osama Tetsuka's uh, Astro Boy, but then there are ones I'd never heard of, like Iron Man number 28 by Tetsujin 28 Go? What the heck? Was that like a pen name? Anyway, yes, but I've just got like a great little reading list for new manga because they wanted to write, add a nice little essay at the back. All right, so uh, Zenon, Heavy Metal Warrior. How could I describe it? It's like a lot of manga you've read where, you know, the boy gets turned into a powerful weapon by the evil corporation and he has to get away from him. Uh, so you, you may have read stories like this, but there are some really slick things about it. So first, uh, since this is kind of the middle of the story, I'm not going to focus too much on the story. I'm mostly going to focus on the art and some really neat little storytelling moments. So they give you the idea of the characters so you understand some of the relationships. And since I was not used to the premise of this story, it's kind of a good moment for me to think about ways that an artist communicates to you things you need to know. So when there are flashbacks, there's this extra box around the flashbacks, but there's only one box around the normal scenes. So I was able to quickly pick up, okay, uh, this bully, he's thinking about his interaction with our boy, Asuka Kano, and what a badass Asuka was. And uh, really, this is the only little panel in the entire book I didn't like, because as I was reading it, I had to look at it again to try to figure out what the heck was going on because of all the details and how tight it was. But apart from that, it, uh, it all has the strengths of 80s and 90s manga. You know, it's all hand-drawn, so everything fits together. Uh, lots of great action line, of course, but some other things I want to call attention to uh, for uh, Masaomi Kanzaki is uh, Kanzaki draws a variety of faces. So it's not just one type of anime face, and there's a variety of locales. Uh, just enough detail is added to the locales to help you kind of feel where you're at, you know, like crumbling textures and little bits of stone. But uh, he's, he's smart, and he'll mostly kind of zoom back, not zoom back, but zoom in and focus on the faces so he doesn't have to draw millions upon millions of niggling little details. So it's it's de just detailed enough to kind of get you absorbed and have you looking at a lot of stuff, but simple enough that this could still be produced rather quickly. Uh, there's also some really neat humanizing moments. So this bad guy who's after our boy, Asuka, is number 204. And at first we get the impression that he's kind of like, just an evil assassin type, but then uh, the beautiful Sonoko appeals to his sense of fair play, and he leaves Asuka uh, behind because he doesn't want to kill kill someone who can't defend himself properly. He wants to fight a worthy opponent. And then Tono, the you know big bad evil business person, shows up, and uh, number two hundred four says, "Am I a man or a number? My name is Jason Boldgard. Use it, damn you! Great, like." Just that, that's such a, you know, am I, a, am I not a man? Am I a man or am I a number? Great. It's adding some human characterization for this guy. And what really impressed me is there's a scene where the high school bullies, you know, run into the bad guys and they get totally destroyed. You've probably seen something like that a hundred times. The bullies show up, they run into the bad guys, the bullies all get murderated. And it's usually just to show how tough and evil the evil organization is. So the high school bully shows up, he sees all his friends dead or dying. He calls them by name and he's emotionally affected by it. And then one of the bullies so it wasn't killed and he wakes up and talks to his friend. And this is a humanizing moment. So these guys weren't just killed off for the sake of having like a badass evil scene where, ha ha, the bullies all died. They got their karma. It's a real humanizing moment for these minor characters. And the whole thing just made me feel like, wow, okay, 
death matters in this world. Even these sort of like uh, bullyish characters, they don't want to die. They uh, care for one another. So I'm really impressed. I'm going to look to see if I can find a full edition of it. And I think I'll post the, the manga in this list later. It's just my own little what uh, what's what in manga reading list from robotic characters. Look at this illustration. There's my bus. I'm going to go get it. And look at this. Look at this ad for Area 88. Manga is so dope, guys. I'm number one Marmaduke fan. I love you guys. If you're sick of Marvel Comics this year, see if, you're, see if your local comic book shop has some freaking old 1980s manga in their 25-cent bin section. Come on. I'll catch you later.